Have you ever wondered how you're going to die? Well, my crystal ball tells me you're going to die of heart disease, unless your name is Alex Reed. Got other plans in store for you, buddy. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in America by far, and that goes pretty much the same for most developed countries. So you are more likely to die of heart disease than all other causes. Forget about being stabbed, shot, dying in a car accident. Heart disease should be your number one concern. But what causes heart disease? You'll hear different stories from everyone, and unfortunately, your average person isn't knowledgeable enough about the science to really judge who's right and wrong. So I'm going to explain to the best of my ability what causes heart disease heart disease using some of the best research available, and dispel some of the misinformation put out by these supposed experts whose advice might literally be killing you. Firstly, any discussion about heart disease always begins and ends with cholesterol, and some of the first research on cholesterol and heart disease was conducted by pathologist Nikolai Anishkov. I hope I pronounced that right. About 100 years ago, he conducted an experiment where he fed rabbits a high cholesterol diet and they developed atherosclerosis, which are fatty streaks that develop inside the arterial wall and they are, in all likelihood, what will kill you. These findings that demonstrated a link between diet, elevated serum, or blood cholesterol levels and atherosclerosis led to the development of the lipid hypothesis, and most modern research supports this hypothesis that elevated blood or serum cholesterol levels causes the development of atherosclerosis. An interesting thing to note about these animal experiments regarding atherosclerosis is they all involve herbivorous animals. No omnivorous or carnivorous animals can get the disease unless they have their thyroid gland removed. Considering how humans can develop atherosclerosis whereas a dog, a bear, or a lion cannot, what does that say about your biology and the food choices you should be making? Even the editor-in-chief of the American College of Cardiology, Dr. William C. Roberts, recognizes that fact and even goes as far to say that cholesterol is the only risk factor for atherosclerosis and all other factors are contributory at best. There's a very good reason why the best heart disease experts in the entire world believe that cholesterol is responsible for atherosclerosis, and that's because the vast majority of the research supports that fact. Firstly, what raises your cholesterol levels in the first place? Dietary saturated fat and cholesterol raise your cholesterol levels, of course, and we have hundreds of metabolic ward experiments conclusively, demonstrably proving this beyond any shadow of a doubt, that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol raise your serum cholesterol levels. And it's also no coincidence that vegans and vegetarians have the lowest cholesterol levels due to their diets being very low in saturated fat and cholesterol, and in the case of vegans, their cholesterol intake is absolutely zero. When your blood cholesterol levels are too high, these LDL particles will damage the endothelial cells lining your arteries, and and will lodge themselves inside of the arterial wall, causing inflammation. To deal with this inflammation, macrophages, which are essentially the garbage-eating cells of your immune system, will attempt to digest this cholesterol that is stuck inside of your arteries. What ends up happening is these macrophages become engorged with cholesterol and become foam cells, contributing to plaque buildup and the arterial wall begins to thicken and harden. Smooth muscle cells within the arterial wall are also drawn to the surface of these plaques, creating a tough cellular patch, sort of like a band-aid. These muscle cells are also drawn to cholesterol-laden fatty streaks, which they encase with fibrous plaques, further narrowing the arteries. This narrowing limits blood flow and oxygen traveling to the heart, but in time, these plaques can erode and rupture, leading to blood clots that will completely obstruct your arteries, leading to a heart attack, which is how you'll die. So how much cholesterol do you need in your blood for atherosclerotic plaques to develop and eventually kill you? Well, the normal healthy physiological range for LDL cholesterol is 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter, and those who have a cholesterol level in that range do not develop atherosclerosis. And it comes as no surprise that we see a linear relationship between cholesterol levels above 75 milligrams per deciliter and the progression of atherosclerosis. This all paints a very clear picture. But it's pretty damn easy to lower your cholesterol levels. Vegetarians put on an omnivorous diet had their cholesterol levels rise by 19%, but after only two weeks back on their vegetarian diets, their cholesterol levels went back down to what they were at the beginning of the study. And heart disease can be reversed. Dr. Codwell Esselstyn of the Cleveland Clinic has his own published research, and he has successfully reversed heart disease in his chronically ill patients using a whole foods, low-fat, plant-based diet. So if you make the right choices now, 
you just might not die of heart disease. So I hope by now it's very clear to all of you that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol are the main contributing factors to heart disease, but I know this is still unfortunately a controversial topic and there are still many of you who will deny that saturated fat and cholesterol have anything to do with heart disease, so let's go over the bullshit reasons why you'd think that. Firstly, cholesterol deniers will cite research like this, which shows no association between saturated fat consumption and heart disease. But if you look closer, this is a meta-analysis of observational studies. Observational studies are completely useless in heart disease research as everyone's baseline cholesterol levels are different. What we need are intervention studies and metabolic ward experiments that calculate cholesterol levels at baseline and note the change in cholesterol throughout the study in order to appropriately determine heart disease risk. Also notice one of the researchers involved in the study is Ronald M. Krauss who happens to receive funding from the National Dairy Council and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Is it just a coincidence that this man who receives funding from the meat and dairy industry would conduct a study that is by design incapable of demonstrating a link between saturated fat consumption and heart disease? No, it's not. He's a corporate shill. Cholesterol deniers will also claim that there is research showing that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol will not raise serum cholesterol levels, which I have already proven to be demonstrably false. We have literally hundreds of metabolic ward experiments proving dietary saturated fat and cholesterol raise serum cholesterol levels. The reason why studies like these show no changes in cholesterol levels upon the ingestion of eggs is because the subjects already had very high cholesterol levels. There's a limit to how much cholesterol one can absorb, and the study just so happens to be funded by the egg industry. Next, cholesterol deniers will tell you that it's not the amount of cholesterol in your system, it's the size of the particles. They claim that the large LDL particles will not penetrate the arterial wall and cause atherosclerosis, but the small dense LDL particles will. This is also false. Large LDL particles raise heart disease risk by 44%, whereas the small dense LDL particles raise heart disease risk by 63%. The large LDL particles aren't harmless, they're only slightly less bad. Cholesterol deniers also say that LDL is only dangerous when it oxidizes. Well, dietary cholesterol promotes LDL oxidation, and diets high in saturated fat are pro-inflammatory. So again, this is just another nonsense argument. Cholesterol deniers also claim that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol raise your HDL good cholesterol, making dietary saturated fat and cholesterol harmless, which is also... Bullshit! Dietary saturated fat significantly raises LDL cholesterol, but only causes a small increase in HDL cholesterol. So your heart disease risk still goes up and you're better off not eating saturated fat and cholesterol. And the last and final stupid argument that these cholesterol deniers come up with is, well wait, vegans get heart disease too, so it can't be cholesterol and saturated fat that causes heart disease. Well, yes, vegans can get heart disease, but that doesn't make saturated fat and cholesterol harmless. It just means that there are other factors that can cause heart disease. Vegans have a tendency to become B12 deficient because many of us, for whatever reason, don't eat many fortified foods or supplement with B12, and low B12 levels can cause homocysteine levels to rise, which causes inflammation, which can then cause the development of arterial sclerosis, not atherosclerosis. Arterial sclerosis is the hardening and thickening of the arterial wall, but it does not involve the buildup of cholesterol like atherosclerosis does. So if you're vegan, just eat fortified foods and supplement with B12, and that goes for non-vegans as well, as non-vegans can also become B12 deficient, and this is something that is very easily avoided. Hydrogenated oils are also vegan, but they're also not healthy for you. They do contribute to heart disease, and whether you're vegan or not, they should be avoided if your goal in life is to live long. The ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fats in your diet also has an effect on heart disease risk, and a ratio of about four to one seems to be around optimal. So avoid oils like olive oil or soybean oil and eat foods like walnuts or flax seeds that are high in omega-3 and low in omega-6. So that is what causes heart disease. All of the research I referenced is in the description down below if you so care to read. And I know a lot of people are going to have disagreements about what I covered in this video, but if you're going to leave a comment and argue, then please support your arguments with research. I don't want to see some blog or news article or some video you linked 
just research and calling me a vegan fag does not help support your opinion. And like I've already said, use valid research to support your arguments using observational studies that do not calculate cholesterol levels at baseline and using sick populations will not help to support your argument and you're just going to waste yours and everyone else's time. And speaking of a waste of time, trying to prove that saturated fat and cholesterol don't cause heart disease is a waste of time. There is no valid research showing that saturated fat and cholesterol aren't implicated in heart disease and the best heart disease experts in the entire world recommend lowering your cholesterol levels and some of them are even vegan. So if you still disagree with the research I presented today, then you're not being skeptical, you are being willfully ignorant and it's going to kill you. So don't eat meat, dairy, and eggs, hydrogenated oils, avoid oils in general, make sure your B12 levels are high, and follow a whole foods, low-fat, plant-based diet and then you don't have to die of heart disease. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.